Today is Friday, August 5th, and this is the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Review. Today's guests are Alan Bush, Senior Financial Economist here at ADMIS, and Steve Freed, VP of Grain Research. Alan, with second quarter earnings for S&P 500 companies projected to be down 3.2%, how can stock index futures continue to make new highs? Aren't lower corporate earnings supposed to be bearish for stock index futures? Well, they normally are, and uh, but this is a, an exceptional time. And the reason that earnings are not so much in focus now as they uh, usually uh, can be or have been is that interest rates remain very low and are likely to stay uh, at suppressed levels globally. So I think traders are looking past the weak earnings, concentrating more on the interest rate outlook, which of course is very supportive, and that suggests that Stock Index futures will continue to advance. On Thursday, the Bank of England announced it is lowering its benchmark interest rate by 25 basis points to a record low 25 basis points. This is the first rate reduction for the central bank of the UK since 2009. How does this affect the US dollar index? Well, it's very bullish for the dollar index. Uh, basically, when other central banks around the world, uh, other than the Fed, are lowering rates, it supports the US dollar from an interest rate differential point of view. So every central bank is either easing or on hold while the Fed may be raising rates later this year or possibly uh, in 2017. So the, it's the interest rate influence that continues to support the dollar index and we would expect further gains throughout the, the rest of this year. In addition, how does the Bank of England interest rate reduction affect the gold, mar gold futures market? More stimulus means lower interest rates, lower interest rates means more inflation. So we continue to, be to believe that inflation around the world, although it's very limited now, is likely to accelerate in the years to come. Uh, in fact, we're already starting to see inflation uh, growing in certain areas. So as inflation fears increase and actual inflation numbers start to uh, show up, that sustains the gold market so I think we are in the very early stages of a bull market in uh, the precious metals, gold and silver. So any break should be used as a buying opportunity. In fact, with gold down today because of the uh, non-farm payroll numbers suggesting a possibly more aggressive Fed, I think this is a perfect buying opportunity for December gold anywhere between the current levels down to the support of 1322 even in the December gold contract. Steve. Corn and wheat have been going sideways since making new lows. Are the bottoms in? I think uh, seasonally sometimes the uh, wheat does make bottoms this time of year and the prices are, are low and the funds have a record short position but there is too much wheat in the world so I would think that we might go more sideways. As far as corn is concerned, uh, funds are just adding to short positions because of the good weather across the U.S. The August 12th report should be bearish corn and harvest pressure should be bearish corn so I don't I think we've made the bottom in corn yet. And soybeans have had a roller coaster ride this week as well. Good U.S. weather versus record demand. Which one will win out in the end? I think the demand will win out in the end. We're, we're kind of in a 925 to 1025 type trading range, but I think once the USDA report is out of the way, I think once harvest is out of the way, uh, I think you'll see soybean prices firm up until the end of the year. And what will the USDA say about U.S. spring crops and U.S. world supply and demand on August 12th? Well, we have one estimate out for a record crop, um, 15 billion of corn, a little over 4 billion on the beans. We have another private estimate coming out today in a, in a few hours. Uh, I think what the government's going to say is a little bit bigger crop than uh, what they said in the July guess, um, which could mean a little bit bigger carryout for corn. Uh, maybe unchanged in the bean carryout, and I think those uh, should be a little negative to prices. U.S. dollar and U.S. stocks could continue to trend higher with crude being lower. What impact may that have on the grains? I think Alan has talked about inflation, so long term, inflation is usually positive for the grains. You know, we still, number one thing we trade is, is weather, but I think that uh, a higher dollar sometimes could hurt U.S. export demand, but you've had some problems with South American crops, you now have a problem with the European wheat crop. So I think it's 
somewhat less of an impact on grains if the dollar goes higher than normally because we have record demand. Thank you both. Please remember that the opinions expressed here today are solely the opinions of our guests and are not necessarily the opinions of Archer Financial Services, ADM Investor Services, or Archer Daniels Midland Company. If you have any questions or comments or would like to know more about our services, please contact us at www.admis.com.